Good morning, Vicar Brandon here, in for Pastor Steve. And just in case you're wondering, yes, I do change my clothes, but I have been recording these back to back while I'm here in the office because next week we'll be out of the office and I'll have access to the camera and things like that as we're journeying through the book of Exodus, recording multiple chapters in one day. So just so you're aware of that, recording these going through the book of Exodus, but I'm happy uh, to be joining you on this journey uh, through the book of Exodus, specifically as we get into the way that God is calling his people to worship him. Last time we talked about how God established some of these different items for worship and that different craftsmen were working on building things for God and for worship and that all the people brought their different treasures uh, to be part of this. And we're going to see in chapter 36 the formation of the tabernacle, this tent of meeting where God would come to dwell with his people, this kind of proto-temple, this uh, tent that came before the temple that was to be in Jerusalem, this first place where God's presence would dwell on earth with the people, although separated in the Holy of Holies. And as we go throughout the narrative of Scripture, seeing that Jesus brings us into the presence of God. He breaks down that barrier of separation. But that's what we're going to be talking about today is the tabernacle and some of the ornate details that God lays out for his people. And so verse 36, chapter 36 rather, starting at verse 1. So Bezalel and Ahuliab and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given skill and ability to know how to carry out all the work of constructing the sanctuary are to do the work just as the Lord had commanded. Again, people using their talents for the glory of God. Then Moses summoned Bezalel and Ohuliab, and every skilled person to whom the Lord had given ability and who was willing to come and do the work. They received from Moses all the offerings the Israelites had brought to carry out the work of constructing the sanctuary. And the people continued to bring freewill offerings morning after morning. So all the people in one way or the other, or most of these people are involved in this process of setting up this place of worship. So all the skilled craftsmen who were doing all the work on the sanctuary left their work and said to Moses, the people are bringing more than enough for the work the Lord commanded to be done. And so the people are bringing more than is necessary. They're generously giving to this project, generously worshiping their God. Then Moses gave an order, and they sent this word throughout the camp. No man or woman is to make anything else as an offering for the sanctuary. And so the people were restrained from bringing more, because what they already had was more than enough to do all the work. Imagine that, more than enough resources to do the work of the God. The people were so generous that they gave of all that they had so that God's mission could be carried out. Verse 8, all the skilled men among the workmen made the tabernacle with ten curtains of finely twisted linen and blue, purple, and scarlet yarn with cherubim worked into them by a skilled craftsman. So these angels woven into the side. All the curtains were the same size, 28 cubits long and four cubits wide. They joined five of the curtains together and did the same with the other five. Then they made loops of blue material along the edge of the end curtain in one set. The same was done with the end curtain in the other set. They also made 50 loops on one curtain and 50 loops on the end current curtain of the other set with the loops opposite each other. Then they made 50 gold clasps and used them to fasten the two sets of curtains together so that the tabernacle was a unit. So these craftsmen are coming together, making these various things. One detail is those cherubim, those angels woven into the side. Again, this sense of this place was to be the place where God dwelt amongst his people. This was to be a heavenly place. They made curtains of goat hair for the tent over the tabernacle, 11 altogether. All 11 curtains were the same size. 30 cubits long and four cubits wide. They joined five of the curtains into one set and the other six into another set. 
Then they made 50 loops along the edge of the end curtain in the one set, and also along the edge of the end curtain in the other set. They made 50 bronze clasps to fasten the tent together as a unit. Then they made for the tent a covering of ram skins dyed red, and over that a covering of hides of sea cows. And think of all these different things, the amount of resources that it would have taken uh, to accomplish this task of building the tabernacle, of building the tent of meeting. And yet it says that they had more than enough resources to do it. Verse 20, they made upright frames of Achaia wood for the tabernacle. Each frame was 10 cubits long and a cubit and a half wide with two projections set parallel to each other. They made all the frames of the tabernacle in this way. They made 20 frames for the south side of the tabernacle and made 40 silver bases to go under them, two bases for each frame, one under each projection. For the other side, the north side of the tabernacle, they made 20 frames and 40 silver bases, two under each frame. They made six frames for the far end, that is, the west end of the tabernacle, and two frames were made for the corners of the tabernacle at the far end. At these two corners, the frames were double from the bottom all the way to the top and fitted into a single ring. Both were made alike. So there were eight frames and 16 silver bases, two under each frame. They also made crossbars of acacia wood, five for the frames on one side of the tabernacle, five for those on the other side, and five for the frames on the west at the far end of the tabernacle. They made the center crossbar so that it extended from end to end at the middle of the frames. They overlaid the frames with gold and made gold rings to hold the crossbars. They also overlaid the crossbars with gold. So overlaying these different things with gold, again, this was an expensive project for these people. Again, giving so many of their resources. But why spend this much treasure, this much money on this place of worship? It's because this is the place where God was going to dwell with his people. This was going to be, again, a heavenly place. And so they wanted to show this reverence towards God. And that's what God is directing them to do. They made the curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen with cherubim worked into it by a skilled craftsman. They made four posts of acacia wood for it and overlaid them with gold. So again, image of angels and gold. They made gold hooks for them and cast their four silver bases. For the entrance to the tent, they made a curtain of blue, purple, and scarlet yarn and finely twisted linen, the work of an embroiderer. And they made five posts with hooks for them. They overlaid the tops of the posts and their bands with gold and made their five bases of bronze. So a lot of detail there, a lot to get kind of buried in the details. But again, what these details are showing us is that God is demanding to be worshipped with a sense of awe and with a sense of reverence. Again, this is the holy God of the universe coming to dwell with his people. And so we see that God is a God of holiness. He is a God who is totally different from us. And yet, especially as we're getting through this Christmas season, this is a God who comes to be with us. This is a God who God the Son took on human flesh, Emmanuel, God with us, who dwells with his people. That's what he did in the person and work of Jesus, that he dwells with his people. And so even though we see this sense of holiness and this sense of separation, we also see that God is a God who draws near to us to forgive us and to give us his love and his grace. Thank you for joining me through some of these details as we continue into chapter 37, where we're going to talk about the Ark of the Covenant, something that's kind of well known in popular culture from certain movies and things like that. Um, but getting some details as to what the Ark of the Covenant actually was and what it actually looked like. And so with that, I wish you a good rest of your day. God's blessings to you.